Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Let's go straight to the front lines review to Robotina, the southern part of Ukraine, Zaporizhia Oblast. This is the actual picture out there, so Ukraine tries to counterattack in two of the directions and Russia has different of the attack vectors. They moved a little bit near to Verboa from this village in this side. However, this attack vector a little bit towards the west was totally ambushed and we have the video confirmation about it. So weather now permits them to use BTR so the soil is more or less robust but they went under the Ukrainian fire and their attack was not going according to their plans. It is really hard to find the logic in the Russian attack so one of the armored vehicles was already turning back but this one was going forward full speed. So if you see that the vehicle turned back and was destroyed, it's better not to assault forward, I think. Well, maybe it happened during the previous mid wave and those guys are new, heading towards uh, their goal. What's the goal? This to be buried in Ukrainian ground? And yeah, definitely I was telling truth. So this first vehicle was caputed during the first mid wave and the other one was sent right behind. Sorry about the watermark, I cannot get rid of it. But could be a good Telegram channel. By the way, I also have my Telegram channel. You may find it in a video description just below. And there I post more information, photos and videos from the front lines and other stuff around Ukraine. One more midwave included even a tank and two of the BTRs. All of them were kaputed. So it is happening almost every day in many of the directions i wonder how many of the vehicles russia has because the number of tanks bmps btrs that was already wasted well it's it's huge it is like a combined army of several of the countries european countries and somehow russia is able to sustain those losses their people are okay with it. There are no any riots inside their army. Well, there was one with Prigozhin. Shoigu Gerasimov wears ammunition. We are just dying here. But other than that, everything is calm. That's why they continue to use their mid-wave tactics, which is unimaginable, for example, for Ukrainian army or any kind of the European army. I would say if Russia has enough soldiers and vehicles, it's their advantage in these tactics. I guess that the only army which may allow the same losses is Chinese army. And our guys over there, they write me that it seems like we are fighting against the Chinese army. They're just going, going non-stop. It is crazy how low the value of the human life in Russia. Their commanders do not care. One more footage from the place. Guys, again, I cannot show you everything, so please check out my telegram. According to the latest military map update, there are no any changes, so Russia wasn't able to take more ground. However, the day before yesterday, they started their attacks in this place and over here. So now there is a significant fight ongoing. As you saw from the video, so FPV drones help a lot. Without FPV, it would be a very difficult stuff for Ukraine to resist against the Russian attacks. In this area, Russia is using paratroop divisions, one of their most capable forces. But for the FPV drone, it doesn't matter whether the paratroopers or regular Russian soldiers are on their BTR or BMP, mostly those paratroopers are not reaching Ukrainian positions. But if they reach those, Ukraine still tries to avoid the direct fight with them in the trenches, so this is how Russians sometimes may take some of the ground. Hopefully, with a new military support, Ukraine will be able to withstand all of the Russian attacks in this place and in many others. I have also a combat image to share with you, but not over here. You know where to search it. Near to Robotina, Russian paratroopers were able to reach Ukrainian positions, but at the same time were driven out by Ukrainian forces. The situation near to the Bakhmut city looks like that, so Russia has again multiple vectors of attacks. They want to find the weak spot in Ukrainian defense, and their main goal for now is to take Ivanovska under control. I still don't know how our guys continue to resist in Ivanovska, because Russia uses everything they can in the place. Unfortunately, I think that Russia will take Ivanovsk under control very, very soon, probably next week or maybe this weekend. But according to the British analytics, Russians are unable to go to the Chasov Yard to take this very important settlement under their control. There is the main Ukrainian base. If we go to the satellite image, you will see that there are just a couple of the roads leading to Chasov Yard, so Ukraine is able to control those, as British intelligence says. Well, maybe this satellite map is better for you because you see all of the settlements. Today, Ukraine was successful near to Bogdanovka, destroying one of the Russian midwaves. 
In Klishivka, Russia tries to get this village under control using their class tactics. They attack simultaneously today from two of the sides. Most of the sender forces over here using the high ground near to Klishivka. Here it was the additional attack, let's say. But this one was ambushed by Ukrainian drones and artillery, so they cancelled this attack as well. We have the video from Klishivka published by our soldiers. They say that it was a long convoy, 18 of the vehicles and many more infantry forces. We have the video from the thermal camera and most of those vehicles were stopped. In this case, Ukraine mostly used mortars and artillery. And the Russian vehicles are gone. But later on, obviously, they'll send more and more forces. It's their tactics. That is why you see why Ukraine needs more ammunition to stop the Russian attacks. We are now in lack of munition, that's why Russia sometimes is able to break through our defense, taking more ground. Using lots of the midwaves, at some point Ukraine is unable to stop those. So it's important to receive the military support. And here we have uh, the map, and it's near to Klishivka, as our guys said. Alright, and here's the situation near to Avdivka, at the western side of it, so Avdivka is over there. Russia was able to break through Tonenka village and that is why this group of Ukrainian army is under the big threat of being encircled by Russians because they have two of the attack vectors so it's important for Ukrainian army to get out from this place leaving Tonenka for the Russian control unfortunately. So maybe this weekend we're gonna see how this gap closed in favor of Russia. But Ukraine has a counterattack in this area, it was quite successful today. Guys, all of those counterattacks I'm telling you about are really small and usually performed by artillery or drones. So then I show the arrow, it's the direction of the strike of Ukrainian army based on the drone images or on the maps. Here we have the video from Avdivka direction, so Russians launched this some sort of the salute, maybe to attract the attention of the drone operator to them, I don't know why they launched it. Nevertheless, our drone operator went towards and just turned around, kind of the professional pilot, I would say, and there is some, some sort of the... You might try to guess what happened afterwards. And this is the Russian BMP, which is quite rare now for the Russian army. Still for me, it's hard to identify between BMP2 and BMP3. I guess this one is BMP2. Also was droned. Russia also lost three of the China Gulf cars near to Avdivka. Basically, they stuck over there and were abandoned. Later on, Ukraine just finished them with the help of the drones. And this video was also shared today. This is the Russian BMP. And it was a big kaboom of it. Probably it was full of munition or I don't know, but the kaboom is really huge. This is also the Avdivka direction. And before, Russia lost many of the tanks in a place and BMPs. So yes, sometimes Russia may gain some of the ground but for what cost? All right, now we are reviewing the Russian page, the Russian source. Yes, I also check the information coming from their side too. I hate what Russia is doing with my country, that's why I'm quite biased. Nevertheless, it's important to check their channels to obtain the full picture. I'm not listening to their propaganda media, but sometimes I look through the information coming from their military bloggers. Now they say that Ukraine lost MiG-29 somewhere in the self-proclaimed Republic of DPR. I haven't found any kind of the information about this case in Ukrainian media sources. Plus, my colleagues from the Air Force also couldn't confirm this information, but obviously it's the secret information, so they cannot tell it to me openly. I asked, I got the answer that we don't know. But Russia shows a very low quality photos uh, coming from the place and they insist that it is MiG-29. Probably it is. Here it might be the part of the ferry or the external fuel tank. Really hard to say whether it is definitely Ukrainian MiG-29. They should have shown some of the markings like the tail, usually it survives the crash or I don't know, any sort of the marking. From what can I say that definitely this part looks like from the MiG-29. Here we have those holes and this drum. Plus the landing gear strut, let's compare it with other image. So this is the nose gear, we don't need it, but this one looks very similar. Uh, bolts over here, the landing gear strut, the drum, it was damaged on the photo. So I would say that definitely it is MiG-29. Also, there is some sort of the canister like on that picture. We know that Russia is not using MiG-29s in this war because it's kind of the short-range aircraft. They use mostly Suhoi, a bigger jet with a longer range capable to carry lots of the aviation bombs 
and other stuff. So Ukraine mostly uses MiG-29s, but then and where it happened, I'm out of clue. Based on this photo, there are no any leaves on the trees, so it could be this time of the year spring. Or it could be winter. Yes, actually, I tend to believe that it was the Ukrainian MiG-29, but to state it 100%, I need more evidence from the crash site. The only thing where Russia is really successful is with Landsat drones. They are very effective. They target lots of the Ukrainian raiders recently. Like this one, for example, and it was really targeted by the Landsat drone. We'll not see the big boom in this case, because there is nothing inside to explode. Also, Russia claims that it hit the NASAMS radar. Indeed, it's moving, the radar is rotating, so probably it's the real one. Right next to it, there is the NASAMS launcher. Two of them, actually. One is here, one is here, and here somewhere a radar. Unfortunately, it was targeted. It is more expensive than NASAMS launchers. Also, they targeted the IS-90 system, which was hiding in this building. Again, surveillance drone helps a lot to identify the positions of Ukrainian forces and Ukrainian units. This time, Russians used the aviation bomb. And here we see the system and the barrel over here, so you may check it out yourself. So indeed, the system is no-go. Luckily, crew wasn't inside by the time. The hangar might secure the vehicle against the FPV drones or Lansen drones, but not against the aviation bombs. We know that Russia now starts the massive production of the FAV-1500, so 1500 kilograms, very heavy aviation bombs, and they also produce the gliding modules for those. It is the huge threat for our guys on the front lines. This bomb doesn't need to be really precise, because with its devastation power, it may do lots of the harm at the vast area. And you see how Ukraine start to lose the air defense systems, like for example NASAMs, putting them closer to the front lines, trying to conquer the Russian aviation. So this variant to fight against the Russian aviation is not good in a long-term perspective. Yes, Ukraine shut down many of the Russian planes, but Russia has many more of those planes, and Ukraine is in lack of the air defense systems, and no one might tell for sure whether Ukraine obtains the new systems or not. That's why the most robust variant to cope with the threat is to use F-16s. They have the longer range of the radar to identify the Russian airplanes, and also they have a long-range air-to-air missiles. It could be a game-changer not to win this war, but to fight against the Russian aviation, which in its turn cancels one of the main advantages of the Russian army. The Ukrainian army does its best to fight against the Russian aggression, but sometimes we are out of the tools. I know that many of you, of my viewers, my friends, do expect that Ukraine will liberate all of its territories. I also believe in that, but it is a very long process, and for that Ukrainian army needs new military solutions, so weaponry, modern-day weaponry, and what is more important, the constant support. Unfortunately, after two years of war, we see that the support lowered dramatically. But something definitely happened to France. According to Politica, France has begun preparations for the war in Europe. They train to fight against the Russian army in some sort of the polygon near to Paris. Although the French army doesn't name the specific enemy, but still they are focused on confronting the Russian Federation. And today President Macron stated that in case Russia would assault again towards Kyiv or Odessa, the French forces would be deployed in Ukraine. What kind of the forces? I'm out of clue. Maybe the regular French army. The information came from the El Independent. It is reported that the French president showed the leaders of French parties maps of possible directions of the strikes by the Russian armed forces in Ukraine in the nearby future. So Kyiv and Odessa were there. Meanwhile, President Zelensky visits Istanbul, then he met with President of Turkey Recep Tayyip Erdogan. They discussed the possible peace negotiations. Erdogan also said that Russia should be involved in those negotiations, well, obviously. At the same time, the Turkish foreign minister says that both of the sides of this war, Ukraine and Russia, have reached their limits in what they're able to achieve on the front lines using their military forces. So now the dialogue is possible, but I don't think like that. Russia still has enormous resources to continue this war. Just look at how they waste their army. Putin doesn't really care. If he needs new people, he will announce a new mobilization, 
he'll produce more tanks, more weaponry, he doesn't care. His goal is to eliminate Ukraine as a country, plus the Ukrainian culture. For him, we are Russians. There should be no difference. All of their propaganda tells about it. Putin himself tells about it in any sort of the interview. For him, these talks could be a break. After which he reforms his army and attack again, as Macron says, towards Kyiv and Odessa. The problem for Ukraine is that in the current conditions we cannot resist forever against the Russian army. And as President of France says that there is a huge risk for Ukrainian defense to collapse at some point. We need to clarify here whether Western countries really want to support Ukraine till the end, till Ukrainian victory, whatever it means. Yes, now it's hard to say what really is Ukrainian victory, because even if we take control over Crimea, over Donbass, Putin might still launch missiles, drones on Ukrainian territory. Also, he might try to attack again and again. From what I can see, the victory for Ukraine is the end of Putin's regime, or Russian's KGB regime. And that is why I think that this war unfortunately may continue for quite a long time. But our allies should be ready to support Ukraine during all of this time. Otherwise, Putin will take control over Ukraine and will attack other countries, doesn't matter NATO or not. I think that he might check whether the United States are able to defend their allies. After all, it's my own opinion, and whether you like it or not, but many of the Western officials plus Western military shares the same opinion. That's what President Biden said about uh, Putin's intentions today. Let's listen. If anybody in this room thinks Putin will stop at Ukraine, I assure you he will not. So Biden says that Putin is not willing to stop. The biggest humiliation for Putin and his KGB company was the collapse of the Soviet Union. They want to restore it under the new flag, but with the old territories, including Central Asian republics, including European countries, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, and Ukraine, obviously. Without Ukraine, Russia is nothing. They already stole our history, our culture. If Ukraine exists, the strong Russia is not possible. I'm gonna tell you more about this stuff with President Biden and all of the United States politics on my other channel. I hope to film on my other channel daily. On this channel, I want to concentrate more just on the Ukrainian topic. And let's listen to British defense officials. I'm the British Defense Secretary here in Kyiv to raise the alarm because what would it say if we allow a democratic country to be taken over by a dictator like Putin? What would it say about our values of freedom and democracy? And it doesn't have to be this way because we easily have the resources of the West if we have the will. So the message is simple. This is a wake-up call for the world. Let's make sure Ukraine wins this war. A very encouraging speech from our British friend. I just hope that politicians on the West will listen to this guy and understand that it's very crucial even for them too to support Ukraine. But we have the crisis in the United States and also real figures show the decline in the military support of Ukraine, a significant decline. How many times do I speak about the military support in this video? But you know guys, it is what it is. We just need it as air. Something is happening in Kursk just right now while I am filming this video. Maybe chainsaw or maybe it is a drone. There is some shooting, probably it is definitely a drone. Yeah, definitely it was a drone. Kursk is the Russian city. There is also a video of how our guys from the 3rd Assault Brigade are using clusters against the Russian infantry forces near to Avdiivka. I just can show you this screenshot, that's it. President Macron now tries to postpone the military deals with countries like Qatar and other Arab countries. He wants all of the produced weaponry to go to fight in Ukraine. It is a huge support we have from France. Macron from zero to hero. I have just received the update from the Mykov 73. He says that the Ukrainian army left the area over here. So there is no risk of encirclement of Ukrainian group in Tanenke. I'm sure that tomorrow we're gonna see the update from the deep state military map where Russia took Tonenke under their full control. At the same time, we see the Russian vehicles are burning in the area. And now, my friends, it is very important, don't forget to press your huge like to this video. And also, if you want to support my job, you might find some of the links in the video description just below. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and 
Have a great time.